Okay, so let's, uh, let's kind of just go through exactly a little bit of review of what we talked about. And then uh, let's just go and see if we can find something else. So the first thing that we discussed was a parabola, formerly known as a parabola, right? And the definition of our parabola was that we had a point which we called the focus. And that was kind of like our introductory to this um, conic section was this focus. Well, the definition of the parabola was for any point, any point that was on this parabola, the distance between the foc foci or foci and the directrix was equal, right? Yes? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And it didn't matter, ladies and gentlemen, if we had a parabola that was opening down or if it was opening up, but any point on the line, the distance between the foci and the directrix was equal, right? So then we started talking, we said, all right, well, what happens then? What if there was maybe like kind of two of them together? And what we started bringing up to is ellipses. And we took a look, take a, took a look at ellipses, and we formulated a definition of an ellipse. So if we kind of took two parabolas, that. If we kind of took two parabolas and kind of forced them towards each other, then what we would have is we ended up having two foci, right? But now we don't have a directrix anymore, right? So the definition of the foci, if you guys remember, was for any point that is on the line, the sum of these two values is equal for any point on the line. So if I said this was A1 and this was A2, this was A3 and this was A4, that we knew that the sum of A1 plus A2 was equal to the sum of A3 plus A4, right? Yes. Remember that. And that was equal if it was a, ver if it was a um, vertical um, ellipse as well. But we had to add them up, right? And that was when we kind of had two parabolas, if you thought of it like this, two parabolas kind of forcing or looking towards each other. Now. What do you think might be another option we might want to look at? What about if we had two parabolas? Instead of adding, maybe what if we did what? Subtracting. Subtracting, right? Mathematics is very much about inverses. You learn how to do one thing, then you probably do the opposite. If you add two, then you subtract two. If we had two kind of folks, uh, parabolas with the foci facing towards each other, then we could also try it with them facing away from each other. Exactly. <laughs> So what that comes up, ladies and gentlemen, is what we're going to introduce now is our state of hyperbolas. All right? So you guys are going to want to write these down in your notes of your hyperbolas. So we're going to go through a little bit of the definition of these. But I just want to go through kind of the formal definition first, and then I'll get a little bit more detailed of um, the characteristics of a hyperbola. So the main important thing I want you guys to understand about your hyperbola is, yes, they still have a center. <coughs> like everything else, and yes, they have foci, just like everything else. And yes, each one of these little shapes also have a vertex, okay? Now, there is a little difference, though. We don't have a major axis like we had in the lift. What we call this axis that the foci, the vertice, and the center all lie in is what we call the transverse axis. So we're going to give it a different name. It's called the transverse axis, okay? So the line that everything lies on is called the transverse axis. So we have our foci, remember, vertex, center, vertex, foci. And notice, ladies and gentlemen, the difference. Notice how the vertices are closer to the center than the foci. Right? You guys kind of notice that? It's a little bit of difference. And if you guys want to go through kind of the definition of a hyperbola, it's exactly like the ellipse, but in an opposite way. What we found out is if you were to take a point, okay, and let's call this B1 and this one B2, and then let's pick another point. I don't know. Here and here. B3 and here's B4. The definition is transverse axis, transversal axis, transverse axis. What you'll look at here is here we added them up. We said they're equal to each other, right? Yes? Sure. For a hyperbola, when we take B1 
minus b2, that's now equal to b3 minus b4. All right, so I just want you guys to understand these definitions when you're looking at them, because now, instead of the addition of from two points to the foci to any point on ellipse, now for any point on hyperbola, when you subtract their distances to the two foci, that is going to be a constant, all right? Which every single point is going to be, this, that the difference will be equal to, okay? So that's the definition of your hyperbola. <coughs> yes. That's not, it's just sort of the formula, it just kind of goes with the definition. Yeah. For any point, it doesn't matter where the point is on the hyperbola, that you subtract their distances to the two foci, and you're gonna get a constant number, yes? In our homework, there was questions that had that were talking about D1 and D2. Is that the same thing as that? Yes, but this was, for your homework, it would have been on ellipses, been adding them up. Yes. What questions were on that? I don't know, but I saw, like, in examples when I tried to look uh, it up, and they were talking about